Hey everybody, so welcome to the second lecture of week three, Good Inter Interpretation is Poetry. Um, so poetry is an acronym from the Personal Interpretation book. It stands for, um, you know, interpretation has purpose, it's organized, it's enjoyable, it has a theme, it's relevant, and it's it's you. Um, it's created by you and it should reflect you as a person. Um, I think that this is useful because it kind of is more descriptive in that it describes kind of the, the, the qualities of um, interpretation in a way that the six principles doesn't. The six principles, in, uh, it does kind of get at the qualities, but it also kind of gets at like the core concepts. Uh, and I think that there's a little bit of a difference there. You know, the concepts are a little bit deeper, um, whereas the qualities are just kind of like, this is what it, it should have purpose, it should have organization, it should be enjoyable, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so what we're gonna learn about, really, we're gonna just dig into some of the attributes of good interpretation, kind of from a structural standpoint. Um, so what is, you know, good interpretation, right? So it's this poetry. So it has purpose. And when something has purpose, right, you've got to ask, like, okay, what does that purpose mean? Like, what what is the purpose? And with interpretation, there's several different purposes, right? So one of it's about, you know, connecting visitors to resources, right? So interpretation is kind of a form of recreation. It's part of the recreational experience in some ways, at some places. Um, it, it, it might want to heighten the kind of awareness or understanding of the cultural context, the environmental context, and it might seek to kind of inspire or add perspective to the lives of these visitors, right? So that's one kind of purpose. Another it could simply be that we want to accomplish agency or organizational goals, right? So let's say you work with the Forest Service and you do interpretive work with the Forest Service, you might want to enhance their, their image, or you might want to encourage the public to participate in management decisions, right? Um, so that could be kind of a goal of an agency or an organization, right? And then a third kind of goal might be promoting visitor use, um, responsible visitor use um, at particular sites, right? So, you know, you might want to promote leave no trace ethics, which have a, a different kind of, Im a, a lesser impact on the biophysical environment. Um, that's kind of more respectful of other visitors in a place, right? So good interpretation has a purpose. That's the P in poetry. Um, it's also organized, um, you know, in the last week, we talked about how stories have a narrative arc. You know, they kind of have a beginning, middle, and an end. Um, good interpretation should also be organized kind of in a similar way. Um, and also, there shouldn't be too many ideas going on at the same time. Um, maybe just like one big theme, a few different cons uh, a few different topics. Um, but that's kind of how to approach organization is just kind of uh, doing something relatively simple by focusing on one theme and having a beginning, middle, and an end. And an end. But that's for reasons that you know humans like cognitively can't take on much. Um, and again, telling a story is something that's really resonant with people and humans kind of across all cultures. Um, so it's important to be organized in that way. Um, also, it's just enjoyable, right? And, and you know, you're in a way you're serving an audience um, and, 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 and they're not a captive audience. They're a non-captive audience, so they can leave whenever they want. So you want to make it enjoyable in some way. And that doesn't mean you need to be boisterous. That doesn't mean to need mean to need, it doesn't mean that you need to be like really funny or humorous right um you know uh by putting you which is the the why in interpretation at the very end by putting yourself in interpretation in your personality and whatnot like i think if you're um if you're uh authentic right and and you're not um like uh trying to be something you're not um and you're just kind of doing it in your own way i think it's going to be enjoyable for people for sure also, um, you know, uh, good interpretation is thematic. Um, so a theme is, is more or less, we, we're going to get into this in a different lecture, but it's basically like a main point or message that you're trying to convey about a topic. Um, so, you know, your topic might be um, Western cedar tree, um, and your theme could be the ways in which Native Americans used uh, Western cedars um, and still use them today. It could be sage, it could be whatever else. And, you know, a theme also has something about, um, you know, that, that touches on tangent, like intangible meanings too, which we'll talk about later. Um, but, you know, using um, Western cedar, indigenous people, it might convey like a deeper knowledge about the natural environment than um, Europeans had when they came um, to uh, the continent. Um, so, you know, the theme or the, uh, 
the kind of intangible meaning might be something about knowledge or connectedness to landscapes, um, whereas the topic could be, you know, a Western cedar, it could be um, the use of sage, it could be whatever else. Um, good interpretation is also, you know, it's relevant, um, right? So it's meaningful, it's, it's personal, um, it kind of has a, a context in somebody's brain. Um, and it really just needs to be something that the audience, again, a, a non-captive audience, it's something that like they actually care about. And there are some strategies that you can use to kind of make them care about it in a way. You know, you can form questions to them. You know, you could say like, uh, you know, how many of how many of you have ever um, had Douglas fir tea or something like that. Um, or, you know, can you remember when you last saw a pileated woodpecker um, or whatever else? You could, if you use the word you, it automatically kind of um, ignites something in the brain for, an audi for audience members that kind of makes it relevant to them because automatically they're going to like think about ways that this question that says the word you is relevant to that person in the audience. Um, so it's actually kind of powerful to um, use framings of use and whatnot to make things relevant. Um, and last, lastly, right, this interpretation requires you. Um, you know, it's your personality. You're adapting to each audience too. Um, you know, your skill as an interpreter. Um, again, this kind of mixture of uh, the science of communication and the art and craft of communication. Um, th those things really lead into a good interpretive program. It's something that comes with practice. Um, it's not something that you're going to be great at right away. It's kind of like any craft. Um, and I really do like to think about um, interpretation as a craft because um, crafts, I think, um, are a mixture of um, kind of... Uh, art and then um, technical skill and knowledge. Um, so kind of like making a pot on a potter's wheel. Um, it requires knowledge, it requires practice. Um, to, to make one that is particularly aesthetic requires a certain amount of like artistic sense as well. Um, so really thinking about interpretation as a craft I think is going to be really helpful for us going forward as we kind of cognitively think like what is interpretation like jesse says it's an art but also it has these technical components um you know crafts things like you know building a house or woodworking or a lot of these skills that we've uh, our culture has kind of lost over time um, i think you can think about interpretation in that way too that it's a it's a craft um so yeah good interpretation is poetry right it has purpose it's organized it's enjoyable it's thematic it's relevant and it requires you um, so what, what did we learn, right? So good interpretation is all these different things. Um, again, this is a little bit different than um, the six principles because I think the six principles kind of get at like the core goals um, of interpretation, um, you know, that uh, they reveal, they provoke and all these things. And the poetry, I think, is a little bit more of like a descriptive characteristics or the descriptive qualities of interpretation. Um, so I hope that this was helpful. I hope that you remember that good in interpretation is poetry and that you remember that acronym and all the things that we talked about and that you read about uh, for this week.